The global image industry is shifting from 2D to 3D at a fast pace. We focus on the potential of the Korean 3D image industry. Creating new jobs through culture and arts. We discuss the economic effects of the performance arts sector as part of achieving the creative economy. Big data technology involves analysis of large amounts of data. We learn about big data which is emerging as a growth engine for the creative economy. A car seat is an essential item for child safety while driving. We visited Daiichi which has received recognition in product quality at home and abroad. Ten years have passed since the Six Party Talks was formed with the aim of dismantling the North Korean nuclear capabilities. What has the international effort achieved and what were its limits? Hello, I'm Andrew Salmon and welcome to Bizline. We've got a packed show for you this week. We'll be covering everything from big data to creative content. But before we go to those features, let's first take a look at all the breaking business and economic news that's been hitting headlines across South Korea this week. President Park Geun-hye called on Korea's top companies to increase their investments as a means to prop up the sluggish economy. President Park emphasized that now is the time for companies to make active and leading investments. She also said that bold investments made during times of economic hardship were what boosted the sluggish economy and increased the competitiveness of Korean companies. A survey by job portal website Incroot showed that of the country's 777 major companies contacted, only 36% said that they are planning to recruit new employees in the second half of the year. That's close to the 35% seen back in the second half of 2009, when the country was suffering from the global financial crisis. The Korea Culture and Tourism Institute says more than 8.5 million Koreans traveled abroad in July, up 9% from a year earlier, and spent 10 billion U.S. dollars, a 13% increase from the previous year. Meanwhile, the number of foreign tourists visiting Korea posted an all-time high of 1.2 million last month, spending $1.2 billion. The Ministry of Land, Infrastructure and Transport has announced plans to inject around 7.2 billion U.S. dollars this year to support 120,000 households that are trying to buy or rent new homes. The ministry says that people who are hoping to move into new homes would be able to secure loans with lower interest rates starting next Monday. From cave paintings to television, visual art and its associated technologies have come a very long way. Today, the pace of change is faster than ever. A key trend in the present industry is the use of 3D technologies in both images and film. Now, Korea is central to this trend. It's a major manufacturer of 3D televisions. The problem is that there's very little content to watch on these sets, but that may be about to change. How do they do it? Let's take a look. The main character in this movie, Mr. Go, a gorilla, Ling Ling from China, that becomes a baseball player in a professional baseball league in South Korea, is not a living creature, but a creation from three-dimensional computer graphics. What's more, the gorilla is the result of 3D computer graphics technology developed in South Korea. The character reflects development of the cinema industry in the country that incorporates advanced technology and computer graphics for visual special effects. The furry creature also provides the answer to the environment the Korean government is trying to endorse, to nurture a creative economy, which also aims to provide more job opportunities, be it in an institution or at a free location. At this studio, some 190 computer graphics artists and coordinators are working together in computer graphics cinematography to make special effects more real than the real world, adding a touch of excitement. Uh, 
저희는 2차 컷이 가까운 영화의 컷 중에서 미스터 고우가 천 컷에 가깝게 등장을 하는 거죠. 그래서 그 분량을 소화해냈다는 점, 이런 점에서 많이 창의적이다, 주목받을 만하다라고 생각하고 있어요. Rather than going to Hollywood for the 3D CG production as done with other Korean filmmakers in the past, the creator of Mr. Go took a chance and decided to start his own 3D production company in the country. Even though the making of Mr. Go is complete, there are still more jobs to follow and already a line of clients waiting, not just in Korea but throughout Asia. 실제로 그렇게 털이 많이 덮여 있는 그런 크리처가 등장하는 영화를 제작한 VFX 스튜디오 자체가 많이 없고요. 이게 뭐 물론 해외 헐리우드 같은 경우에 웨타나 에르미나 여러 가지 회사들이 있지만 그 아시아에서는 실제 작업 자체가 이런 규모의 영화 자체가 없었고 어 지금도 저희 그 어떻게 보면 아시아에서 가장 큰 영화 시장이 중국인데 중국에서 크리처 관련된 작업들이 저희 쪽으로 의뢰가 많이 들어옵니다. 그런 면에서 아무래도 아시아에서는 덱서 디지털이 어느 정도 자리매김을 하지 않았나 이렇게 생각을 합니다. Investment in the creative industry as seen with this production company brings opportunities. In computer graphics, although it involves high technology, it still needs high concentration of labor to produce scenes projected on the screen to mesmerize the audience. Moreover, the program was developed in Korea to create the furry gorilla character, bringing down the cost of making the movie itself. It was around $20 million, substantially lower than about $100 million it would have cost if the project had been taken to Hollywood. The feature also looks promising in the field of computer graphics and visual special effects, or VFX. Thus, the job market is expected to grow further in the domestic market. The entertainment contents market is expected to grow about 7% annually for the next several years, to surpass 100 billion US dollars in 2017 from about 80 billion recorded last year. Fortunately for the people who want to enter the business of the creative economy, one needs not to seek opportunities only in large institutions, also one's workplace isn't limited to a large studio with supercomputers. The industry, as in the realm of computer graphics and visual special effects, allows work of creativity to be conducted anywhere, even in a coffee shop, thanks to development in software technology and laptops. The advantage is Three-dimensional computer graphics and CG, in general, shows that there are so many opportunities to explore, even as freelancers being part of the creative industry, as long as they are good team players. And they welcome this way of working because they say it brings out the best in their work of creativity. In the creative industry, people need to have innovative ideas and the willingness to become entrepreneurs, experimenting and carrying out ideas with novelty. 정량적인 수치로 봤을 때도 문화 콘텐츠 산업의 고용 개수는 12명 정도 되거든요. 제조업이나 통신업이 6명 정도로 알고 있어요. 그렇게 봤을 때 문화 콘텐츠 산업이 창조 경제에 있어서 핵심적인 역할을 할 거라고 저는 생각하고 있고요. 더 많은 블록버스터가 제작이 됐을 때 VFX가 핵심적인 역할을 할 거라고 생각합니다. The spirit of the creative economy incorporates entrepreneurship and thus computer graphic artists in the field will also need to face challenges to realize their dreams. And the future of the creative industry looks promising in South Korea as there are many who are not afraid to face challenges and pursue their dreams.
almost impossible to open a Korean newspaper today without reading about the success of Korean artists abroad. Moreover, there's a strong consensus that cultural power, or soft power, should be an important part of any nation's national brand portfolio. However, has the success of Korean artists and the Korean wave been exaggerated in Korea? Moreover, how large is the sector in export terms and what role should culture play within the broader national economy? These are some of the questions we'll be asking in today's interviewee. He is himself a movie director and is also a professor at Seoul Institute of the Arts. Professor So Jae-young, Jay, welcome to BizLine. Nice to meet you. Okay, let's, let's get started. Now, speaking broadly, how big a chunk is culture as a sector of the national economy? Um, there are varying reports, but pretty much it's a very small percentage, less than 50% of the economy. Less than 1-5%? Yes. All right, so clearly Hallyu, although it's, uh, it gets a great deal of publicity, is actually quite a small piece of the, uh, the economic picture. Um, that having been said, how important is it more broadly beyond economic terms? How important is it as a part of the, uh, the national brand? Um, if you want to measure it in terms of economic terms, like you said, um, it's a very small percentage. Mm -hmm. But one of the things about Hallyu is that, um, as the professor from Harvard said, it's a soft power, uh, a soft content that's happening. And basically what that is is uh, you're trying to attract people to something without coercion or get people to want what you want. Mm. And that's what Hallyu is doing very successfully. So, um, you know, Hallyu started in the late 90s and basically Korea was an emerging uh, sort of industrial power. Uh, the image that it had wasn't specifically that attractive to a lot of countries, but right. because of Hallyu, it's completely rebranded the national image of the country and now people think Korea represents prosperity, um, it has a cosmopolitan style of life, and so a lot of Korean exported material is now seemingly more attractive than it did before Hallyu. So Korea is now much more aspirational than it used to be um, right. in the past, and I guess you can't really put a, a dollar value on that. No. So, I mean, those are things that, uh, you know, people said that soft power is something that you can't really measure in terms of economic yeah. sort of output. But in terms of uh, behavioral patterns and consumer uh, sort of indexes, it has a tremendous effect because when you basically have a country that's branded as something as being uh, an item that you want, um, it's much easier to export any, any kind of item from that country and, and be welcome in any country. Yeah. And presumably there's a whole range of trickle-on and knock-on economic effects from celebrity endorsements, product placements, and so on and so forth within the actual content itself. Mm -hmm. President Park and hare has made a cultural prosperity um, part of the national agenda. Um, what are some of the policies and budget allocations we're seeing from the government in the, the cultural area? Um, President Park has promised uh, a lot of money to be put into the sector. Um, we'll have to see if she really comes through with it. Okay. But so the, days, yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, but the previous administration has also said uh, they would be behind the arts. But um, I'm in the field of education. Mm. And one of the drawbacks to uh, putting cultural things and art things with economy is that you want certain kind of statistical data results from it. Yeah. For example, jobs you know, how many jobs are created right out of, say, an art school. And that's really, that's hard to do. Um, and I think President Park is now taking a different approach. She's actually said she will uh, put money into the arts, put money into the humanities, because, as you said, cultural pr prosperity has to do with the way a person views life. You know, if you only think about money or about inventing something without sort of the cultural aspects of it. Um, that can cause certain, certain kinds of inhuman decisions to be made. And one of her philosophies is basically to uh, educate people from the ground up, from grassroots, basically about arts, about humanities, and that in turn will be much more in terms of uh, creative output and also economic output, much, much more prosperous, is her theory. And I'm really hopeful that maybe this will sort of change the landscape as we see it right now. Okay, well, fingers crossed. Yeah. yeah. In terms of the actual sector itself, wh what is needed? Where is the budget needed to, um, to be allocated? Um, is it talent training? Is it education? Is it the building of infrastructure? W what would you like to see? I would say all of the above. Okay. But mostly I would say um, 
we really need to build infrastructure through education. Yeah. Um, I'm in the field of education, so I really see it firsthand. All these bright young people with hopes to try to get in the industry. But for example, in the film part of it, um, our industry is very small. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of students come in with uh, bright hopes of becoming a director or producer. Uh, a lot of actor wannabes as well. Um, but the thing is, the industry is too small to handle all of that. Sure. So in order for that to change, I think what we have to do is really change the structure of the education for just the general public to really start supporting the arts a lot more. I know when I went to England, for example, um, a lot of, there's a lot of theaters in West End, but there are also a lot of local theaters that basically the population or the community really supports. And those are the things, uh, grassroots things that the government can really support to do. Uh, basically train sort of amateur actors, not just, not just in colleges, but in the community, so that basically when they grow up, they, they want to see the arts and become consumers of that. Right now, I think we have a very small percentage of people in the world, and especially in Korea, that want to consistently see arts content. And I think in order for that to change, we have to really change the infrastructure, the way the education system is run, and also just basically changing the, the minds and attitudes of people mm. to like the arts more. Gotcha. Um, and talking about competition, you know, the arts, the competition is absolutely savage. For every super, super group, there's a thousand struggling artists playing pubs or, or busking on the street. Um, you know, is this kind of excessive Darwinianism you know, central to the industry? Is there any way that there can be a, a better balance um, of, of reward and risk? Um, is there job creation underway? Um, I think you hit it on the nail. Basically, it's very savage, the competition yeah. out there. Uh, and that's not true just in Korea. That's true in the arts. All over the world, the world, right. And, and that's because there aren't as many jobs or opportunities, yeah. and especially in Korea. Um, you know, all the high-profile actors or the high-profile musicians uh, they seem to make a lot of money and they're out there, but th the people, if you look at the whole scope of the number of people out there, and I, I think there was a, if you divide it up by all the numbers, it came out to less than the minimum wage that everybody would get yeah, yeah. for it. So, um, yes, uh, th the way you can change that is, again, the government sort of coming in to sort of create more jobs. Also, um, I know a lot of uh, jobs in the in industry with the arts, they don't provide things like basic minimum wage mm -hmm. regulations or insurance, things like that. I think those are things that the government could regulate so that we can have people get into their arts and not feel like um, they have to basically scrape by a living. Struggling artists, right. yeah. So those are things that we're trying to do. But also, public awareness. Right now, a lot of people don't know that the, this is the reality of the arts field, that it's very competitive because it's such a small sector of the, you know, the w economy of the world. So basically, we have to change the way people view it. And then we need much more consumerism in arts of different forms, music, uh, gaming, film, dramas. Um, and I think, like you said, one of the things that we have to do is kind of diversify the content as well. I think, um, you know, K-pop is great, but it's still a basic a couple of entertainment management companies getting young people and then branding them a certain way. You know, and I think Psy, again, I hate to mention him again, but he really took that out of the mold because he, he wasn't something that anybody could sort of create. Right. He was an so original in itself, yeah. exactly. Okay, but um, you, you mentioned France, you mentioned the UK just now. What are some overseas uh, benchmarks y you would like to see the Korean government adopt? What are some ways that the governments can successfully promote you know, creative industry? Right. Um, I mentioned the, the French industry, and the French are very, first of all, you know, they, they've one of the people that claim to invented art itself. So, um, for example, cinema, um, it's, it's the French law that you have to show French cinema in the theaters a certain number of years, so they have a quota system themselves. And also, French language movies, not just from France, but other countries that have French language. So, um, these programs are in place to sort of uh, promote French sort of culture. And I think it's something that we can really benchmark in Korea. I think uh, we're starting to move towards more of the Hollywood model, uh, unfortunately, which is all about just let the industry make money and do it. But I think government regulations have to be in place. I know, for example, the, the, the British industry, for example, the, 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 the UK Film Council was something that really supported a lot of um, 
sort of indie movies and um, unusual movies. Um, it's also sort of getting, because of the conservative government in the UK, uh, the budget has shrunk. But at the same, same time, without it, I think the British uh, film industry would suffer a lot more. So those are sort of, um, I would say, benchmarking government policies of other countries like Korea could really study. And also, Korea could be in the forefront of that. I know when I visited the Philippines once, that they were studying our policies mm. to sort of uh, you know, uh, promote what Philippine content was. Yeah. So we could be sort of in Asia, sort of the pioneers of this as well. Got you. Now, speaking much more broadly, and we're talking social issues here rather than economic ones, does Korea truly reward creativity? You mentioned yourself that uh, in the past, Korea was seen as an industrial sort of economic stormtrooper economy. Everyone was a conformist. The, the artistic types were, were really left out in the cold. Um, how much does that mindset still need to change, even in this era of, uh, of Hallyu? Uh, well, I was educated in the West, and um, I always tell my students here in Korea to sort of uh, take a, a, a wider uh, sort of view of things. I think if you, there's an old saying in Korea, it's like you're, a, you're trapped in a little pond as a frog. And uh, I always the tell the frog people, in the well. right. Yeah, right. And so I always tell uh, people, you have to look beyond what you know. You have to constantly challenge yourself and not just let the borders of where you, where you stand be comfortable. And I think uh, Korean artists are, are basically hope for Korean society because like you said, our society is very conformist. We do things a certain way, everybody follows it. And I think what art really does is actually break those barriers and allow people to think, oh, you know, I was thinking one way, now this is something acceptable to me. Um, these are sort of things that I, I think uh, behavioral pa patterns are changing, the way people are looking at it psychologically is changing. And so the arts have to sort of be sort of promoted in that way to change Korean attitudes. But at the same time, I think, uh, one of the big hopes of the Korean industry is also the IT industry, which is constantly coming up with new technologies. Yeah. Um, and I think when you sort of marry the two, and um, you know, I don't want to name specific industries, but basically if you take the mobile industry, for example, I know that the design of a mobile phone is something that comes from arts and culture. Yeah. And now it's something that we live with on a day-to-day -day basis that's part of our lives. And these are things that are coming out of basically uh, results like movements like Hallyu. And I think um, for us to sort of escape that sort of conformist sort of, um, I guess the way I look at it is, is, is uh, it's a boring sort of culture. Um, we have to constantly think out of the box. And to do that, you know, you have to constantly be thinking artistically, creatively, and also, like I said, to, to move out of your comfort zone and boundary. All right, well, well last question then. Um, the sector as a whole, film, but also the broader cultural sector, are you optimistic or pessimistic about its future? I think, uh, you know, the, all this culture and arts, it's completely unpredictable. Um, and how you, who knows how long it's gonna go on for. But as artists, we're continuing to dream about things and we're con continuing to create. So that's something that you can't stop. Now, in terms of it being attractive to a lot of people, I hope so, and I hope it continues, but um, art will continue to prosper. Okay, well, let's hope so. Jake, good luck with the movie. Thank you for being on BizLine. Pleasure. Tremendous. If you're the kind of person whose mind boggles when you encounter the kind of numbers commonly seen today in everything from currency conversions to macroeconomics, I sympathize with you. My eyes glaze over too. But as industry continues to leverage both information and knowledge, the size of data is growing bigger and bigger and bigger all the time. This makes companies' ability to crunch these big numbers increasingly a factor in their competitiveness. In this era, we're seeing the rise of a whole new profession. Let's meet the big data analyst. Big data is becoming more and more important as a new growth engine that could reshape the landscape of all industries. Typically, big data means large data sets exceeding one terabyte. But more importantly, it refers to huge volumes of digital information without a specific form or cycle. 
In an era when 150 million tweets are generated and 4 billion YouTube videos are played daily on average, every bit of information in our daily lives is being saved in massive volumes. Big data technology extracts useful information from large data sets. Big data 기술은 기존의 데이터 분석 기술로는 처리가 어려웠던 대용량의 데이터, 다양한 포맷의 데이터를 빠르게 처리 가능케 해줍니다. 소규모 데이터가 아닌 매우 큰 빅데이터를 분석할 경우 의미 있는 현상이나 패턴 등을 찾아낼 수 있고 이를 통해 미래 예측과 데이터 기반의 의사 결정 및 비즈니스가 가능해집니다. According to market research firm IDC, Big Data Market, which was valued at 3.2 billion US dollars in 2010, is expected to grow 40% annually and rise to about 16.9 billion dollars in 2015. South Korea and other countries are preparing to utilize and diffuse big data-based technologies. 올해 KT와 서울시가 미래부의 지원을 받아 통신사의 위치 통계 데이터, 서울시의 대중교통 이용 데이터를 분석하여 심야 버스 노선을 수립한 사례가 있습니다. 또한 다음 소프트와 건강보험공단이 손잡고 전염병 예보 서비스를 개발 중에 있고 신용카드 거래 데이터와 상권 분석을 통해 성공적인 개인 창업을 지원하는 서비스가 개발되고 있습니다. To invigorate big data technologies, ICT-related institutions are conducting training to cultivate big data specialists. The government is slated to introduce a big data license. Still, how do big data experts analyze such massive information? We visited a South Korean big data analysis firm. The company has developed its own text mining technology, which can extract useful information from Korean text to analyze data on social networks. For example, a hypothesis that stock prices are driven by moods derived from Twitter feeds has been proven. 한마디로 얘기하면 어, 오늘의 느끼는 감정을 가지고 내일의 주가를 예측한다라고 보시면 되겠습니다. 어, 예를 들어서 사랑이라는 그 감정이 오늘 트위터 상에서 많이 발현이 되면 내일 어, 특정 주류 업체의 어, 주가가 오른다는 거죠. 어, 이런 그 기반은 우리가 갖고 있는 그 아홉 개의 감정을 어, 개별 주식 종목의 종목을 시켜서 어, 매핑을 통한 그 통계학적인 분석을 갖고 어, 주가 예측을 하는 건데요. 어, 사실 이제 기존의 그 이성적인 판단에 의한 그 투자가 점차적으로 이제 감성적인 판단으로도 이루어지고 있다는 그 사실을 보여주고 있는 거죠. There are also other things that can be predicted via big data analysis. 예를 들어서 소셜상에서 우리의 일상을 살펴보면 어, 우리가 커피를 마시고 싶어하는 시간이나 그리고 여자들이 화장을 고치는 시간 그리고 이제 쇼핑을 하고 싶어하는 시간 등등의 공통의 타임라인에서 갖고 있는 욕구나 욕망들이 많이 보이고 있는데 어, 거기에 맞게 그 우리가 커피 마시고 하는 싶어하는 시간에 커피 쿠폰을 날려준다거나 그리고 그 쇼핑하고 싶어하는 시간에 이제 쇼핑 정보를 제공해주는 그런 이제 현재 마케팅 쪽에서 많이 활용하고 있다라고 보시면 되겠습니다. 누가 심장마비에 걸릴까? 또 누가 범죄를 저지를까? 또 누가 대출금을 못 갚을까? 라는 것들에 대한 걸 바탕으로 어 보험료를 올린다거나 뭐 대출을 안 해준다. 또 범죄를 예방하기 위해서 좀, 좀 무리한 얘기지만 미리 체포한다든가 같은 어 예측 기반의 그런 것들이 지금보다 훨씬 많이 높아질 수 있다는 라 그런 세상이 다가올 수 있는 거죠. In a laboratory of Assam Medical Center, researchers are analyzing human genes using big data technology. A human genome consists of about 30,000 genes. Using big data technology, researchers are trying to find out information on possible outbreaks of a disease and its sensitivity to a certain medicine by comparing a person's gene data with genes of tens of millions of other people. 폐암의 원인이 되는 유전자 변이가 10여 개 이상 밝혀져 있고요. 어, 그 어떤 유전적 변이를 환자가 가지고 있느냐에 따라서 항암제의 처방이나 종류가 다 다르게 됩니다. 그래서 이와 같은 유전자 정보를 기반으로 한 맞춤 치료가 앞으로 어, 미래 의학의 대세가 될 거라고 생각을 합니다. Big data has its advantages, but this could come at a price. 
Gene information is a type of personal identification information that is more sensitive than resident registration numbers. By using this, confidential personal information on the internet and SNS could be disclosed. Big data 활용을 위해서는 데이터 간의 연계가 자주 발생할 수밖에 없는데 이 과정에서 부득이하게 개인 정보를 기반으로 한 데이터가 필요할 수가 있습니다. 이로 인해 개인 프라이버시 침해 문제가 발생할 수 있는데 이를 해결하기 위해 데이터를 활용하기 전에 개인 식별이 가능한 부분을 확실히 제거토록 해야 합니다. 이외에도 정보 융합으로 발생할 수 있는 저작권 분쟁 등이 벌어질 수 있으며 이에 대한 종합적인 법 제도와 명확한 가이드라인 제시가 되어야 합니다. Big data, so-called resource of the future, can solve many pending issues in society, create new wealth, or invade personal information. Still, it will surely bring about innovation in the future as a new paradigm. Last week, we looked at Korea's baby products market. This week, we look at a sub-market, the market for baby car seats. Now, currently, that's a market dominated by imported brands, driven by the demand from Korean mums. But things are changing. Korean producers are now coming up with new designs with increased safety features and better looks. And buckled securely into this trend is this week's Hidden Champion. Car accidents can happen anywhere at any time. Young toddlers are especially vulnerable during these life-threatening accidents. Car seats act as lifeguards, which make it an essential item rather than a product of choice. A Korean company has made it its goal to create the world's safest car seat. All kinds of birth-related items, including baby products, were on display at one baby fair that opened recently. There was one booth that attracted many parents with young children. It was a booth that introduced car seats, which is considered an essential item among parents with babies these days. It's especially important to own a car seat if the parent is a car owner who drives. Safety becomes a priority for these parents, so it's natural for them to select the safest car seat that is available in the market. <laughs> 나중에 선택을 갖는 거는 이제 안전성하고 편리성, 그 다음에 이게 얼마나 가격이 합리적이냐 이 부분을 고객들이 선택을 하고서 구매를 하시는 거기 때문에. Since 2006, when the first safety law for children below the ages of six was passed, seat belts for passengers sitting in the back seat and an installation of car seats for toddlers have become mandatory safety regulations. In Germany, 97% of the population abide by the safety regulation and in the United States, around 74% follow the rule, while only 37% of Koreans put on seat belts and use car seats for children. The number of vehicle registrations have been on a steady rise every year in Korea, and with it there is growing expectation for parents to see car seats as an essential item mainly for child safety reasons. The domestic car seat market is expected to increase amid the potential growth in consumer demand. The growing recognition for Daiichi car seats has been reflected on the sales increase, driven by growing demand by customers. Daiichi car seats are gaining a lot of support by Korean parents. 
Daiichi has the biggest domestic market share, which is a hard-earned result that came after years of experience in the car seat industry since 2001, when not many Koreans took part in using car seats. 독일, 미국, 일본 여러 나라를 출장 다니며 세계 여러 엄마들이 유아용 카시트를 사용하는 모습을 많이 보았습니다. 그래서 그때까지만 해도 한국에서는 유아용 카시트에 대한 많은 인식이 없었기 때문에 유아용 카시트의 안전한 상품을 아이들이 많이 사용했으면 하는 마음에서 카시트를 개발하게 되었습니다. Another aspect of Daiichi car seat that has led to its recognition is product quality. The company strives for perfection in product safety and technology. 최고의 품질을 하기 위해서는 가장 중요한 것은 카시트 안전한 설계인데요. 자동차 부품의 설계 기술과 카시트 기술의 설계 기술의 융합으로 가장 안전한 카시트를 이루어내고 있습니다. 안전한 설계와 생산 공정의 부품 테스트를 철저히 한다는 점에서 다이치만의 강점이라고 할수 있습니다. The Daiichi car seats have belts that can be worn both ways and made to fit the child's body through its body engineering design. The most important part is to provide child safety. Daiichi car seats do just that by dispersing shock waves into five directions around the abdomen area during a car crash in order to minimize damage. The Daiichi car seat uses 100% pure organic cotton, which is soft on a child's skin without causing any irritations. 충돌 시험, 편리 시험, 고정 시험 및 전복 시험 중 모두 만점에 가까운 점수를 받아 총점 100점 중 97.5점을 받았습니다. 유아용 카시트가 안전 용품이기 때문에 부품, 반제품, 완제품의 3단계 품질 검사를 통하여 카시트가 생산이 되고 있습니다. 이러한 점이 고객님들께 전달이 된것 같습니다. Housewife Park Seolyeon uses the car seat whenever she goes out with her children. With the birth of her second child, she has two car seats in the back seat, where the children are safely tucked in while she is driving. She uses a Korean car seat by Daiichi mainly because it satisfies her concerns for safety and design. Before the car seat, the child was trying to go down to the car seat. But after the Daiichi car seat, it was very comfortable. So when we were walking around, it was very comfortable to use it. The car seat was very comfortable. 사용자 무게에 따라 접목이용, 유아용, 어린 학생용으로 구분되어 있습니다. 국내에 유통되고 있는 제품들은 각 제품마다 사용자의 사용 무게를 표시하도록 되어 있습니다. 따라서 소비자는 사용자의 무게를 고려하여 선택하시는 것이 중요합니다. Daiichi has become popular in China, Russia and Japan. It's being well received for quality, design and in price range. Korea has come a long way from relying on foreign imports to creating its own car seat brand that is headed into the global market. For any parent, there is nothing more important than keeping their child safe, so it's no surprise that parents are picky and meticulous when it comes to choosing the right car seat for their children. The choice for the picky parents is a Korean car seat that boasts world-class technology. In 2003, China launched a new initiative, the so-called Six Party Talks, which united China, Japan, the two Koreas, Russia and the United States. The move was designed to denuclearize the Korean Peninsula. A decade later, what has been the result? The talks themselves are in suspended animation and North Korea is a de facto nuclear armed state. This raises troubling questions. Have the talks failed? And if they have failed, what should the future strategy be? Ten years ago, the first ever six-party talks among the two Koreas, the United States, China, Japan and Russia took place in efforts to end North Korea's nuclear program. 
Despite several rounds of negotiations, the talks failed to reach the goal and have been in limbo since late 2008. And now, amid warming ties between the two Koreas, there are rising speculation that the dialogue will resume within this year. There are mixed opinions about the long-stalled negotiations and evaluation of its results, which is a much-needed task at this point in time. I think it's only fair that, that you come to the conclusion that the six-party talks has failed because it failed to not only stop North Korea from further development of its nuclear weapons, but rather it has led to in fact, a progress in North Korea's nuclear weapons program. I'm not saying that the six-party talk somehow fueled and helped North Korean nuclear weapons program, but it certainly didn't you know, stop it. The advent of the multilateral disarmament talks in 2003 followed escalating security concerns surrounding Pyongyang's nuclear development. In January of the same year, Pyongyang had withdrawn from the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty and had also defaulted in 2002 on the agreed framework, under which it agreed in 1994 with the U.S. to freeze its plutonium-producing nuclear facilities. Several rounds of talks eventually resulted in the September 2005 joint agreement. The United States and the United States and the United States and the United States and the United 한반도 평화 체제 구축을 보장하고 북미 관계 또한 이제 북일 관계 정상화도 보장한다는 그런 안을 가지고 있었기 때문에 북핵 문제 해결뿐만 아니라 한반도 평화 구축 그리고 관련국들의 뭐 관계 개선을 함께 가져올 수 있는 매우 뭐 탁월한 그런 이상적인 아니었다고 볼 수가 있습니다. But negotiations hit a roadblock just one month later when Pyongyang was found to have continued its nuclear buildup and Washington placed restrictions on Macau-based Banco Delta Asia suspected of laundering millions of dollars for the Communist North. What happens? In July, North Korea fires, launches its long-range missiles, and then later on in October, North Korea conducts its first nuclear test. This is a serious blow to not only the six-party talks, but the non-proliferation um, treaty. After the nuclear crisis came to a climax, a lot of efforts were made to bring back the North for further dialogue. And in February 2007, members hammered out a denuclearization plan, setting a 60-day deadline for Pyongyang to disable its nuclear program in exchange for aid and the release of the BDA funds. The participants continued their efforts to keep the dialogue afloat. However, by the end of 2008, North Korea had restarted its nuclear program, barred nuclear inspectors, and walked out of the talks in early 2009. <laughs> 어 그런 것들을 더 많이 얻어내기 위하고 또 협상 과정 과정에 협상의 국면을 유리하게 끌고 가기 위한 북한의 도발 전략 이런 거는 병행되었다고 봐야죠. Since the withdrawal from the multilateral talks, North Korea has conducted two more nuclear bomb tests as well as three long-range missile launches. Unfortunately, despite the original objective of somehow persuading North Korea to get rid of its nuclear weapons, what we've had is instead three nuclear tests from North Korea. So despite the good intentions and goodwill well, when it got started, uh, just the opposite result has resulted. Of 
북한 핵에 대한 국제사회 통제 메커니즘이 사라지게 되고 그 사이에 북한은 마음껏 핵 개발을 추진하고 또 이제 핵실험을 강행할 수 있는 그런 이제 뭐 열린 공간을 가지게 된 것입니다. Pyongyang has recently expressed its intention to resume the long-stalled denuclearization negotiations by actively engaging in discussions with Seoul and Beijing. 우리 정부의 신뢰 프로세스가 탄력을 받고 있고 국제 사회에서 지지도 확보하고 있고 또 북한 문제 3차 핵실험 이후에 북한 핵 문제를 더 이상 방치해서는 안 된다라는 중국 정부의 당국의 판단 이런 게 섰다라고 본다라면은 최근 우다웨이의 중국 방 북한 방문은 육자 회담의 개최 가능성과 연결되어 있는 부분이 분명히 있다라는 판단이 가능하게 하고요. There have also been debates about alternative ways of dealing with the North, such as different multilateral forms. 러시아는 비교적 중립적인 입장을 보였기 때문에 사실상 큰 기여를 한게 없고 일본은 납치자 문제와 북핵 문제를 자꾸 연계시켰기 때문에 국자회담에서의 합의 이행에 어려움을 가져오는 어, 육자보다는 남북한 그리고 미중의 사자가 참여하는 그런 협상이 보다 효율적이라고 볼수 있습니다. I don't think that's going to be the case at all. Whether, whether it's bilateral or four party or six party, um, North Korea clearly seems to be very much bent on becoming a bona fide nuclear state. Be it bilateral, four-way, or six-way, any form of the nuclear talks must resume. And all parties should engage themselves with a genuine approach to achieve the previously failed goal of dismantling the nuclear North Korea as soon as possible, so as to bring peace and stability in Northeast Asia. And that's all we have time for this week. But do join us next week when we'll be assessing results of President Park and Hez's sales diplomacy during her state visits to Russia and to Vietnam. But that's all we have time for for now. Thanks for watching. I'm Andrew Salmon. This was Bizline. Goodbye.